going to show you the easy four-step process of inoculating yourself with helmets. Now before you get started, you want to make sure you have all of your supplies. One bandage, two Eppendorf tubes, one of which is marked and the other is not, and a pipette. With these four things, you are going to work toward balancing your internal ecosystem. Step one involves the bandage. You open it up. And you expose the cotton the central cotton of the bandage. So you're going to leave it open like that, exposed. You're then going to take your two Eppendorf tubes. Now these tubes don't need to be refrigerated. They don't need to be around extreme heat or extreme cold. Uh, as soon as you get these, you really need to go ahead and get them onto the bandage and into your skin. Because, as I said, this one has 35 helmet larvae inside of it. The number 35 lets me know that this is the tube containing the helmets. So it's gonna be the one I use first. I'm gonna very carefully open this. I don't want that liquid to come out. We're not gonna fill it all the way up to where the liquid goes in the bowl. So you want to just fill it up about a little ways, and then you pour that solution into the center of your bandage, right in the center of the bandage. We want to keep it as close to the center of the cotton as possible because we really don't want that liquid to spill out. There still could be some helmets in here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this extra Eppendorf tube with the solution. I'm going to keep this propped a bit, show my dexterity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pipette to get this rinsing solution from this to this. So I can make sure all the helmets that need to go on the bandage go on the bandage. So it's the same process with your second Eppendorf tube. Squeeze a little out, not all of it, because you don't want to um, get it stuck in the bowl. And then you squeeze it into the helmet tube. Let the air out, squeeze it out, and into the helmet tube. I'm done with the solution Eppendorf tube, so I'm going to put that away. And now, I'm going to close up my helmet Eppendorf tube, and I'm going to shake it after it's good and sealed. Look at all those helmets shaken up. All of the larvae need to come out. I open it up gently, careful not to fling liquid across the room, and I do the process one last time. Now with the helmets and the solution going onto the cottony part of the bandage. Now once you start putting the helmets on the bandage, it's really important to go ahead and get them onto your arm very quickly because you don't want them to dry out. At step four, you want to put your bandage on a flat surface of your arm, either your bicep or your forearm. I'm going to do it on my forearm. Um, I've heard that uh, people have good results. My brother actually had really good results with it on his forearm. So. We're going to lay it on that flat part. We're going to stretch it out. We want a good tight fit, but you don't want to squeeze it so tightly that the liquid comes out because then the larva could come out as well. So we've got a good tight fit right there. It's time for the larva to do their thing, do what they do best. In 10 minutes, I will probably start feeling a little itchy sensation or not. It really depends. Some people feel it, some people don't. Um, that just means that 
the helmet larva realize it's time to move on. The circle of life is continuing. They're going to go into my skin. And um, within 4 to 12 hours, all of the larva will be inside of my body. Now, if the itching gets too bad, some people have worse reactions than others. If itching gets too bad, within, if you wait at least four hours, you can put an alcohol-based Benadryl cream on there and it will help. Um, but I'm going to leave this on overnight. And um, in four to five days, these helmet larvae will be growing. They'll make it inside of my intestines. And then in 21 days... They reach adulthood, and they attach themselves to the walls of my intestines, and they start doing those things that my body should have been doing naturally, but unfortunately it's not. Um, that's the process, and I'm doing this for the first time, so I'm eager to go through the process with you. And as you can see, there's nothing scary about hookworms. There is, there is nothing, nothing scary about the